Hello everyone, it's Price Scooter here, and unless you're blind, deaf, dumb, stupid, retarded, and can't even see the screen you're watching, you probably already know what I'm planning on doing right now. Yes, I'm probably going to play the most over lp game in the world, other than Ocarina of Time. Plans for that later. <laughs> Regardless, we're here to play Super Mario Bros. 3. And... I'm going to actually make this a long play run. As in, I'm not going to skip levels or worlds, I'm just going to play every single world, every single level. I gotta get used to my buttons here. Did I get my buttons backwards? I did get my buttons backwards. Quick cut while I fix that. Alright, and we're back. Woo! We had a cut in the first minute of gameplay. And also a phone call in the first minute of gameplay. I'll be right back. Okay. And I am back once again, folks. I do apologize. First, I can't jump. Then I, then I can't. Uh, <clears throat> so, excuse me. Then I get a phone call about my uh, used car up for sale. If you're even wondering what the hell I'm doing, don't worry. Most people probably wouldn't know what I'm doing either. Uh. I should probably start by going over the controls with you guys as I'm flying above the area. Shoot, 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 shoot. Anyway, uh, B in this game is run. It's also like your utility, so if you have to spin your tail... If, if you spin a tail, shoot fireballs, whatever you have you, you hit, you hit B once and you'll do it. Damn it. I haven't played this game in a while, so I... <laughs> so uh, you're gonna see me kind of flail about a bit here. There we go. And uh, that P-Bar, that's something that was new that was interested in... Interest... In... Interested... Inter... Introduced... In Super Mario Bros. 3, but it's not in any other games. It more or less just means when you can hit... When you can hit Mach Speed Zoom Go. Basically, you run long enough, that'll fill up. Uh, a is jump, as always. If you press A again while jumping and you have a leaf and you have the raccoon power-up like I do, you'll slowly float to the ground. And that is an end of the level card. It's kind of like playing a slot machine in, in, all, in all honesty. Uh, you just jump into the end, there's like a perfect spot to jump at it too, so... And I'll tell and I'll try and tell you what that spot is. Or it should be pretty obvious. Sorry, I'm, I just this is just one of my favorite NES games, so I figured I'd pull it out of the closet and and uh, play with you guys. One up up here. Missed it, but there is a one up there. I'm not lying. <laughs> Now, I don't know every secret about Super Mario 3. I would like to say I'm pretty close, though. Uh, let's see. You can slide in this game, slide down hills. I mean, a lot of things in this game are what were, um, is what got used when it came to Super Mario World, so... This is like the game that kind of set the standard for everything else in gaming. Someone's on attack! Super Sub Assault Attack! And there's the timing again. Usually, usually if you can jump like right at the uh, <clears throat> right at the end of that little mountain range there and you'll get used to where the position of it is as you play. You can uh, you can kind of get a star every time. The hardest, the hardest one to get in my opinion is actually a flower. And that's the secret block. Let's take it up to the Nirvana secret world. I'm on Cloud Nine. Whatever other Euclises you want to use for, dude, you're baked. Anyway, if you get a running start here, right about this point, there will always be a, a one up. I missed it, but that is a one up there, so you can potentially get two one ups in this area. And I'm going to show this little secret here. Uh, oh, shoot. 
What you want to do is you want to crouch here on this white block. You'll pass. Eventually, you'll pass through the back of it. Add balls to it. Take the hit. And if you run back here, just keep running. You re you'll reach the first golden whistle. This is what speedrunners like to use. You press B to open chest, by the way. This is what speedrunners like to use to get through the game in no time flat. This is the Toad House. Basically, enter, you get a free item. Um, there are, there's not really a formula for what item contains what. I usually go for the middle box, just uh, regardless, unless I know that the, unless I know that it's one of those quote unquote special suits is hiding in that Toad House. Oh, sorry about that. So, yeah, and you can access that stuff on your screen. Uh, the warp whistle that I saw that you saw earlier is used for transporting you to. Uh, is basically allows you to skip three worlds at, up to three worlds at a time. Like I said, a lot of speedrunners use it. I I'm not going to use it in this because I'm going to play through each and every world. Uh, those of you that have the Game Boy Advance version of this game, this might look this level might look really familiar. This is the level where you, if you collect all the coins in the level, all the hidden and visible coins, you can unlock the, you can uh, unlock the coin pirate ship in the sky. And I'm going to try and do that right here. Maybe you need to hit this box. There we go. So yeah, if you collect every single coin, actually I think it unlocks the blue mushroom house. But, oh, that was cool. Die, Koopa. Hey, buddy, I'm leaving you. Oh, I missed it. Uh, if you if you fudge up the three cards like this, you get a one-up. If you get two, all three mushrooms, you get two-up. If you get all three flowers, you get a three-up. And if you get all five stars, you get a, you get a five-up. Huh, I must have missed something. Uh, uh, you gotta kinda sting just start sticking out your head there, buddy. Anyway, this is the first fortress, and I'm sorry, I am kinda cutting myself off because I'm trying to play through this as quick as possible. I'm trying to play through this as quick as possible, and uh, still teach you guys how to play Super Mario Bros. 3 if you haven't already. One of the greater games, greatest games of all time. Okay, nothing jumps out of there. Dry bones. Uh, they're, if you haven't seen one before, basically you jump on them, they collapse, but after you leave them go for a bit, they come back to life. Now, with the leaf power up here, if you want to kill the dry bones and run all the way from the right there and jump up and fly up there, up above us, you'll reach a secret door that'll get you under the other golden whistle. And with that second golden whistle, that's how you can get to world 8 right from the beginning. Damn it, I missed. I can't remember. You can, yeah, you can just stand here. It won't hit you. Anyway, press up through the door. And fight the mini boss that a lot of you know as Boom Boom! Boom Boom is a bitch. Except he hit me. I died to the bitch. Now doing that, it kind of... It kind of blows up that lock, which has no impact on the game and it, at all. If you went to get the whistle, the lock would would still be here, so would still be uh, around that path. So, and that enemy there is a wandering hammer brother. Basically, you have a short fight with with one or two hammer brothers, and it will give you an item. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you can find a power up in the blocks that, he's, that they stand on. And then onto world one, level five. Hold down from the start, and there you go. Now there's another one of those pink, uh, pink uh, boxes to take you to cloud nine in this level right there. Fortunately, we don't have the leaf, so we can't get multiple one-ups, but we'll still get the one. Now you may be wondering why I'm doing this. Well. Sanctum is, hasn't updated yet, or it doesn't have any new updates yet, and no one's really contacted me about playing it, so I kind of need some filler content 
open some filler content for my third LP. For my third LP or my second side LP. While it, all the rest goes on. Now I'll show you this area down here just because this is where you would normally go through if you, uh, well it's the one or two areas you would go through if you didn't have the uh, secret warp. See? And we're right back where we were. I'm just going to go ahead and run through here. Oh man, I'm going to get used to swimming in this game. There's a turtle. Okay, he's not coming out. And spazzled eggs! <laughs> I don't know how I did it, but I used to be able to do time this well enough that I could get off of there and jump on top of the, uh, uh, what you want to call it. I could jump off of there and get on top of the level there. I have since then lost that ability. But, nonetheless, we got a card. Ah. Once you reach a certain score, I think it's like every 80,000 points or something like that probably every 75, every 75,000, you get to this end card here, which for those of you that played Super Mario Bros. Wii, this will look very familiar, and serves the same purpose, except there's no Bowser on this, you, no, okay, crap, it's you, no, okay, well, I know where two are, nope, I had no idea where that last one was, on to level six, now, uh, and this is where the game's gonna kinda say, yep, perilous jumps, have fun. And I'm gonna leave that leaf behind because it's fun to do this. Actually, no, I'm not. Because there's a secret in the Super Mario Bros. 3 Advance, and I don't know if it's in this game, and I haven't really sat down to see if it's actually here. Well, besides the secret, there are just hidden coin blocks everywhere in this game. No! Damn. Oh well, it's not like I needed them. The secret I'm talking about... Ugh. Did not get enough air balls. I kind of want to die just to try and see if I can get up there. Ah, bugger. I tried to fly back. Okay, well I'm gonna give I'm gonna do that shot because um, oh yeah, you can press B on the overall map to access the, your special items, and you can use multiple items at once. So those of you who play Super Mario Bros. Three or the Super Mario Bros. Wii, yeah, this is where your uh, item use system came from. Is nothing up here? Yes, it is up here. Woo! I did not know that secret was actually there. Land on the ground. Oh, I got a mushroom. Lay balls. Dun, 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 dun. Go visit Toad in the Toad House. In the Toadenhausen. Yeah, you like the Toadenhausen, yeah? You like the leaf, yeah? Don't know why I'm speaking, I'm speaking German, yeah? Whatever, let's just go in here. And the thing and the thing with every castle you go to is the king will be transformed into some random creature that you will that nine times out of ten you never see on in the game other than this one spot. So they made special sprites just for this. And you have to go fetch the one back from one of the Koopa kids. And I wonder if I can do it. A bullet Bills! Their first introduction into the Mario world. Oh man. Come on. I used to be able to jump up on the cannonball and get above this place. It makes it so much easier. Now this may look easy-ish to you now. It's gonna get harder. Oh! A lot harder. Oh! Whoa! Mario! Mario! And sometimes, you, and sometimes you want to let the ships grow all the way to the right because sometimes there's hidden items on the right side of this pipe here. This pipe will lead you to fights. First we fight Iggy! I think it's Iggy. Iggy is just like fighting Boom Boom. No real threat whatsoever. 
got that one way up there. Sweet. So yes, your first fight in Super Mario World is also your first fight in Super Mario Bros. 3. You're going to see a lot of stuff in this game that got implemented into later Mario games that made them as awesome as they are. Hello, Sultan. Sultan of Grassland. Damn, Toad, you got a big ass. <laughs> anyway, and in this in this instance, Princess Peach has never been has not been kidnapped. She'll actually give you helpful items. But I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut the recording here. Next time, Super Mario Brothers 3, the long play the episode, the long play run. We're gonna go through World 2, Desert World. I'll see you then.